<laughs> yeah, uh, but like, but like, yeah, you seem to be like a really uh, one thing I heard you say in an interview. You were like, you said you don't want it to be the best fighter, but you want to be the smartest fighter, which is something I don't really hear a lot of fighters say. Yeah. Um, how do you, I guess, how do you, how do you go about being the smartest fighter? How, how, how do you go about that? Because I love learning. So basically when you ask me the question, you ask me what makes me want to be the smartest fighter or basically like, how do I go about being the smartest fighter and how does it work for me in my career? Uh, the second one, how, how do you go about being the smartest fighter? Oh, because being just like Floyd Mayweather said, being smart is what wins you fights. You know, all the, all the toughest guys, the tough guys that you know, they here today and going tomorrow, you know, uh, whether it be with anything in life, when guys is just basing everything on letting their nuts hang, they don't last for long, especially in this sport. You got guys that start talking wrong and they don't go back to their families the right way. And, and it's never about being the toughest. It's always about being smart. It's just like playing chess in life, man. You got to figure these things out. I don't need to be the fastest. I don't need to be the strongest. But if I'm outsmarting my opponent, I got it. You know, this game is what what they would say 90 percent mental and 10 mental. physical so everything is very important in a mental piece and yeah. a lot of people don't have it and it's and important they, to have that they say that heart can get you killed too you know if you have too much of it if you use it too much yeah heart heart can get killed because uh, i feel like heart is another word for a lot of people and it comes to a certain point where you use heart. He's like, man, this guy, he needs to show heart. You see what I'm saying? So it's good. But a lot of times people overuse heart. It's, yeah, I got heart. I'll, I'll do anything. Yeah, I got heart. I'll fight that guy. Or I got heart. I'll do this in this situation. And to me, it, it sounds like when they saying they got heart, it sounds like they saying I'm dumb. I'll go right into the street and run into a speeding car. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you you got to be smart about things, you know? And, and that's where that's where fear comes from. Like Mike Tyson said, you and, and Custy Amato, you know, I, I read his book. If, if it wasn't for fear, you wouldn't do things the right way. You'll cross the street when it's when it's a a, a green a, a green light, you know, a red light while cars are coming. You see what I'm saying? So just because you have that fear, that don't mean that you're scared. That means you're ready to do what you have to do the smart way to survive. No, absolutely. Um I know you're like a boxing student because I've heard you speak about fires that you study. Mm -hmm. By any chance, have you watched any like of uh, Michael Nunn at all? You know Michael Nunn? Michael second to none. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. It ain't no fun <laughs> if you watching Michael Nunn. That's a Shout fact. to Michael Nunn. I be repping James Tony a lot because that's my favorite. But at the same time, I love Michael Nunn because he a slick, tall southpaw like me. Okay, that's why I, I asked. I like that. Yeah. I was yeah. I be watching his highlights. Like I be up on him. I was watching him like about a month or two ago because I had my little phase where I watch certain fighters at certain times and stuff. Cause that just be what I be feeling at the moment. I, I'm I'm the same way, man. Like I remember like last year for like two months, all I watched was uh Marlon Starlin. You know Marlon Starlin? Yeah, I know Marlon Starlin. He worked yeah. with Eddie Futch. He was good. He had a real good high guard. Yeah. He answer the phone. Yep. Yeah, see, see, you know boxing, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you too many fighters that you wouldn't know of already. Yeah. Because most fighters, if I tell them like Marlon Stallone, they're like, who's that? Like, who's, who's yeah, Michael yeah. Nunn? Who's Marlon Stallone? But, yeah, but you know. know. Yeah, I know him. But a wise man knows he knows nothing. So that's, I'm that's always true. willing to learn and figure something else out because that's going to help me grow. And absolutely. Um, there's all, And boxing has so much history. You can always learn about new fighters. All the time. Yeah, from different countries and different weight classes. Like, do you watch the, you watch the smaller weight classes at all? Like the guys that like, you know. Like, like one, the 108s. And yeah, like yeah. Like some guys. guys. Right? Yeah. The only no, nah, that's sad to say. <laughs> like I, I know, I know a local small guys. Shout out to Dylan Price. You know, yeah, that, that, I, I know, I know, like the local guys. But and that's something that I need to even tap into because you can learn something from everybody. So I can learn something from them. But the last of that breed that I really remember, like the names, is of course like the Barreras, the Pacquiao's, and um, what's 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 my guy name? He he loved. I, I love Nonito Donaire. That was one guy I ran into, and he embraced me and he gave me game and. and, and and taught me some tricks and even some things mentally that he do. Okay. You watch, uh, so you, you never watched like Roman Chalatito Gonzalez or nobody like that? I watched them, it, but it just, it seemed like pretty much just come forward, throw a lot of punches. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's exactly that. You might need to watch it a little closer. All right. So I will. So yeah. you, you, you see what I'm saying? You might've correct me in that. So I would have to go look back and check him out. Yeah. Like he's not, I mean, like you got to really pay attention with him. Cause like, uh, 
he he does throw a lot of punches and he and he does like to come forward, but he does it in an intelligent way where he's he's parrying a lot of the shots. He's a master at like parrying punches. And, oh, see, now yes. I gotta look at that because I stepping, love defense. Stepping around you, like parrying the shots, stepping around you to create the angles and getting three or four or five of them off. Like I'm watch them tonight now since you said the that. fight. The fight you should go watch is what go watch him versus a uh, Brian Valoria. That's the fight you need to watch. Okay, Brian Valoria. There was a there was a straight right hand he threw that was like. He, it was like maybe like an inch or two. Like you couldn't even see that he threw it, but like he threw it and he clipped the dude with the right hand and dropped him. Wow. He has a he's a great fighter. If if you're someone who likes the subtleties of boxing, that's like the best guy, one of the yeah, best yeah, guys. Yeah, to yeah, watch. Yeah. I am. Thanks. Thanks for putting me on. No, no, definitely, man. Uh, we got a we got some questions for you, man. Uh, they uh, my man Kevin Effect wants to know from you, Atif. Uh, what was your amateur pedigree? Yeah, you're <laughs> in the perfect place for all that. <laughs> Where on, you at? Hold on. Oh, okay. National uh, champion. National champion. That's the okay. first Golden Glove that I won. Look, we got trophies all over here. But I'm going to tell y'all what I won in a minute. But I'm just giving y'all a tour of where okay, we at. Okay. You this see what I'm saying? This your like room or something? Like what? This your room? No, this my this my dad's barber shop. Oh this shit! Okay. Well, I mean, we got this. The first National Golden Glove right here. Okay. No, is this? Yeah, that's the first one. But I won a uh, Boxer of the Year award, all that thing. But I won. Two ring side world champions, two okay. national golden glove championships. Uh, I also won the junior Olympics. That was my first national that I won. I was the runner up in the silver gloves. That was my first national I went to with only like five fights. And I won a national junior Olympics with only 10 fights. I was on the USA team. I'm the US Olympic alternate. Um, if a okay. lot of people watch, watch that and you know how politics go, you know, you know how things go. Uh, I fought in the world championships in Russia. I fought in the Netherlands overseas in a duel, and I fought two times that night. I mean, two times back to back, and I won. I fought. Where else did I fight? Yeah, but I, I have the international experience. I fought in Bulgaria in two different, the same tournament, two different times. So was it was it was it the Aiba World Championships? Was the Aiba it? World Championships was the was when I fought in Russia. Yes. Okay. Okay. And but the other one was. No, yeah, I said Netherlands, but the other one was in Bulgaria, and it was the Stranja. They say it's like the the oldest boxing tournament in the world, but it's not a ranking tournament though. Okay, okay, yeah. so yeah, so so basically, in short, it, it's an extensive amateur pedigree. Exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> really, and but it it if if my my perfect amateur career would have been that I ended out with the Olympic gold medal, but you know. That's if we was living living in a perfect world. But I always said when I was a kid, oh, I want, I want when my name is coming up across, I'm making my pro debut. I want them to say, oh, two time national Golden Glove, ten time national champion. I said I wanted those things to happen, and it, it did happen. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. Sometimes I do miss the amateurs, but I really miss it more so when we were kids than adults. Because when you're adult, it's not as fun anymore. Well, not even just that. Like, uh, I, I mean, I know you're early in your career, but like, uh, ha have you had any like, I guess, experiences where like the business of boxing maybe has soured your love for the sport? Because I know fighters say they go yes. through that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I don't. I don't need to know anymore. How <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will ask you? Say, where did you get that dancing in the ring from? It reminds me of Emmanuel Augustus, the drunken master. Okay. Okay. So, of course. Emmanuel Augustus, shout out to him. He the granddaddy of that style. Like, of course, like that's who I'm who I'm learning from and who I'm watching. But my family could dance, my dad can dance, my grandpa could dance. And like when I was young, I just see, you know, that's what we do with my mom or whatever. We all that family get togethers. You dance with each other and have fun. Yeah, at the cookouts and whatnot. I started I started to put two and two together because I like to dance, right? And music. You know I mean, I, my grandpa told me before he passed, God rest his soul, he told me, like, and my dad told me the same thing. You go with, you know what I mean, the feel of the music. So I put two and two together. A lot of people, when they look at me, and I don't know why, because I always felt like I was fundamentally correct and had a slick style, but people would look at me and say, oh, yeah, you're an awkward fighter. And I'm like, how? <laughs> so I put the awkward movements and then like I do little awkward things in a in a ring because I know it it it, it takes them off they square and I put that and I said, Well, I'm gonna put dancing with it too. <laughs> and then when I st studied Emmanuel Gus's, I'm like, whoa, you see what I'm saying? So 
and I already had that kind of like herky jerky style naturally when I'm when I when I'm cooking you and I'm really having fun. I get that. <laughs> so like then I just really started all the way dancing and studying the manual and and then it really just all like come together. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good answer. Yeah. And, and, and that's something that too, that, that could work for a guy like yourself. Cause with, with, with your speed and power and your, your range, you know, if, if you're, if you land heavy shots on someone and then you start dancing, that might piss them off and might make them get out of their game plan. It, it, it do. And it, it's a lot of things behind it. I can't give, give away uh, yeah, all yeah. of my things, you know, no. I'll tell you off air. Okay. I'm not going to give away all the truth, <laughs> but it's actually a method of madness. Okay. 